Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm sorry not to be with you in person as I'd hoped. Nevertheless, it's a great pleasure to speak to you today. Having grown up around Norfolk and Cambridgeshire, I feel a great affinity for the east of England. I also feel a great affinity for the North Sea. In the 1960s, BP opened up the UK's first offshore gas field at West Seoul. And in the 1980s, I spent some time further north as manager of the 40s field. I'm now involved in the North Sea's offshore wind sector as an investor in Sejax, based here near Great Yarmouth. In all that time, I've never been more optimistic about the future of the energy industry in this part of Britain. The resource is vast. The Southern North Sea gas fields have a lot yet to be discovered. It's, it has the perfect conditions for offshore wind, and it has the potential, I think, to become a centre for marine energy. And that could mean big rewards for businesses in the east of England. I don't just mean for the big oil majors, the big utilities and the turbine manufacturers, but for businesses right across the whole supply chain and across the whole life cycle of projects. We often forget how much work there is after facilities are installed in this very hostile environment in the operation and maintenance of rigs, pipelines and turbines. That could mean long-term contracts for local businesses and skilled jobs for local people. But none of these benefits are guaranteed. The work could just as well go to Scotland, to Denmark or to Holland. In order to make the most of the opportunity, we've got to make sure that the east of England is the best place to do business. And that requires businesses, governments, and the third sector to work together. That's what makes the East of England Energy Group and this conference so valuable. Three issues strike me as being particularly important. First, we need the right skills. It's an obvious but often forgotten fact that people can't get jobs if they can't learn how to do them. We need innovative partnerships between business, government and educators to deliver the right skills at every level. Second, we need adequate infrastructure. Across the Channel, ports are often state-owned and heavily subsidised. Better facilities there may outweigh our geographic advantage. We need to turn our ports into offshore energy hubs. Third, and most importantly, we need to maintain public support. In these difficult economic times, offshore wind risks being seen as a luxury the country cannot afford. We need to prove them wrong. We need to demonstrate that costs are falling and that the benefits are real. I hope that this conference gives you the chance to discuss these issues and to build the relationships that will underpin our success. Thank you very much.